I realize we're at the, towards the end of the past couple of days of learning a lot of heavy technical stuff. So I thought we'd start off by going over uh, the grain structure of the American white oak tree and figure out how to, uh, I'm not gonna do that. Uh, we're gonna talk about building mobile apps with Ionic and Vue. Uh, Mike Hardington, you can find me on Twitter. Uh, I guarantee you, you will see so many pictures of my cats. Uh, the internet runs on cats, so that's where my Twitter account exists. Uh, I work for Ionic, I'm a Google developer expert, if that matters. Um, for those, actually, show of hands, who's heard of Ionic before? Okay, so I guess we don't really need to go over this, but I, I think I'm going to just because it helps me uh, understand what I actually am doing. So we build an entire component kit for making mobile apps that run on iOS and Android. And obviously we provide all the standard kind of components that you would expect to get from a UI kit, uh, but we have them adapt for both iOS and Android, so that way your users can go and use these apps uh, and feel right at home in their, uh, in their platform of choice even if it's just web technology. Uh, we have a pretty awesome community with meetups all over the world. So maybe if you are in some of these areas, uh, Netherlands, uh, there are some meetups around there, but really we are an extension of every single uh, community that already exists. If you are a JavaScript developer, you can use uh, Ionic and you can develop with it. But other than the huge amount of community that we have, we also have some pretty nice apps uh, these are four that I've highlighted that uh, other people have made that I think are really great uh, examples of Ionic apps. Has anyone ever heard of an app called Untapped? Yeah, woo! Uh, it's a really great app. It's like all the best parts of social media plus beer, so I'm happy with that. Swork, so it's like a health and fitness app in case you want to know. Want to go out the previous night, drink a couple beers, and open up Swork it and work off all that beer weight. Uh, sous vide, you can tell what I actually like to do, beer, workout, sous vide. And then my final, uh, last one over here is an app called Just Watch, which I've been using a lot uh, recently to find all of my favorite shows and movies uh, through across different streaming services. Uh, really like that one. So last year, it feels like it wasn't that long ago, but it's been a year. Uh, well, at the very first ViewConf, I actually had the uh, privilege to be up on stage giving the first look of what we were thinking about to bring Ionic to Vue. Uh, we, we typically were tied to one particular framework for a long time, but what we wanted to do is find out how can we open up Ionic to not just uh, Angular, but also Vue, also React, or no framework at all. And we have this great idea. What if we use web components? Uh, if you've heard of web components before, who's, who's heard of them? Awesome, this is great. I really don't have to say too much about them. Uh, but what they can allow us to do is to just bet on, say, a web API and a web standard versus having to re-implement custom solutions uh, every time there's a new framework. So instead of having to create custom view components uh, that have to manage their own view instances, we can just build a component as a web component and just have Vue render that. Vue is pretty great, it can understand that, and it will render it. And with that, we kind of released the early alpha teasings of Ionic Vue and wanted people to try it out, uh, help us build with it, and give us their feedback to figure out, hey, are we doing things right? Is this the Vue way? Uh, or what can we improve? And we learned really quickly that there was a lot of things missing. Um, while it's great to just say, hey, I can take all this, I can take this component library, throw it into this framework, and expect everything to run, it doesn't create a streamlined system. And really, that's kind of a key part of any component library. So we have, I have a GIF over here of the app that I demoed last year. And it works, it loads things, it has some interactions, but there's no actual routing. We're not changing the URL, we're not having any animations involved. So we just get this really kind of bland app. I, I look back at it now, I'm just like, oh, why did I do that? So we decided, what can we do to fill the gaps with this? And it came down to really three parts. Um, navigation, uh, an adjacent part to navigation, also tab, uh, a tab-based uh, UI interface, and CLI integration. 
So let's kind of go over that. So with navigation, we're talking about routing, and it's kind of confusing. Uh, but what View Router is actually able to do is make this very approachable for anyone in their app. So we figured out how can we take the uh, simplicity of View Router and the great animations and gesture support that we have in Ionic uh, and combine them together. But then how do we also provide everything and not have to reteach people like here is how Ionic does routing. We want to do things like how does a uh, view do routing? So we created this Ion view router component. Uh, this is a proper view component. So all it does is wrap the view router. We provide a new uh, Ionic router instead of view router. And that's really the only change. We change the component that is getting rendered and we change the import and automatically we have uh, animations and gesture support built into the app to where we can have views change and animate, maybe yes, maybe no, but we can have gestures to uh, go to a view and then swipe to go back. Yeah, there we go. So all that's kind of baked in and it's one additional tag. I really think that this kind of brings the best part of Vue and Ionic together. Uh, again, our animations are handled internally, so you don't have to wire that logic up yourself. It's already done, it's already provided. The Vue router config is already there. You're not having to rebuild your routing to fit a different approach. It just works, which I think is, you know, the, the key thing that everyone wants to uh, achieve, it just works. And then when it comes down to navigating throughout your app, you're still using view router APIs. So you're still using route, uh, router push, still have access to router, uh, route params, and have uh, that API available. So we're not overriding everything, we're just augmenting the view router to enhance it. So routing was like the first big thing. And we wanted to say, okay, well we can route to one place. What if we wanted to have multiple routers? Uh, routers? Or if we want to be able to navigate to say, a tab which has three different sub views, net switch to a different tab which has its own collection of sub views, and then be able to maintain those, uh, maintain those uh, histories. Well, we, act we attempted to do that. And I think we got a pretty good, uh, pretty good story over here. So building on the router approach that we did last time where we had new Ionic router, we essentially are creating a route called tabs. This could be a default route, doesn't have to be anything, but for example purposes, tabs is works out. And then we load the tabs component. Now that is the outlet that we're going to render all of our tabs in. And then this little tab bar towards the bottom now that allows us to be able to say, okay, I have a tab, it's going to map back to a route that I want to load up. And then that tab one, for example, over here, has its own view, uh, Ion view router. And then we give it a name property because once you have multiple view routers or router outlets, you're gonna wanna give it a name. So up in the router config, we're literally just saying, here is the path that I want to render. Here is the components and where I want this to be rendered in. So we have this really nice system of being able to wire this all up without having to do too much work to get a desired effect. I really like this because I think this opens up the opportunity to be able to have like really deep nested routes and complex navigation. Um, any kind of compelling app that's out there is going to want to use stuff like this. Now, I will admit, navigation is very complex. Uh, I had this whole analogy that I was thinking about, like these Russian stacking dolls where you can just infinitely nest into a different route. Uh, the analogy didn't work, but I really just liked that image, so I kept it in there. But what you can notice is we have most of the things taken care of. And this is the part where I'm actually gonna call on, uh, feed, uh, call on you all to give us feedback. Uh, we want to know if we're doing things okay or for doing things great or doing things poorly. Uh, we want feedback, we wanna know, is this working? Can we improve it? What can we do to make this better uh, for you? 
Uh, the next part that we wa uh, walked into is the CLI. And of all the CLIs out there, Vue CLI is a great one. Uh, I love to be able to go through and pick out all the options that I wanted. Um, mostly, I just saved the preset. That's all TypeScript. Uh, class components, because I like class components. Uh, but I like that it's easy to configure and then it also extend. Plus, the CLI GUI is pretty nice. So to integrate with this, we actually created a Vue CLI plugin. So all this does goes through and takes the app that you already have and allows you to add Ionic without having to start up a new project, start going through and figuring out, okay, what do I have to change? The Vue CLI plugin just allows you to be able to, or the Vue CLI plugin slash Ionic, it's a very long name, uh, it allows us to go through and just add the CSS that you need, add the dependencies, manage it all for you, uh, and it's probably like two files. Uh, we're looking to get this published in a little bit, um, but it was a really great experience to be able to do this and just say, hey, you add Ionic and it works. Now, we focused a lot on some of the things that we're doing to support Vue. I did want to take a little bit to just talk about some of the things that we're doing inside of Ionic to also give you a better app experience. Uh, and one of those things is CSS variables. Has anyone tried CSS variables yet? Yeah, not as many people. Uh, if you get a chance and you get a brand new project, try CSS variables before you considering moving to SAS or adopting any preprocessor. Uh, this is an app that I've been building out and it automatically uses CSS variables to change the theme uh, based on Mac OS's system dark mode setting. So this is a really cool feature. And instead of having to reload or load an entire different CSS file or generate multiple CSS files, I'm just changing like 20 different variables and the entire app automatically manages that. And what's pretty cool here is when we use the uh, CSS media query prefers color scheme dark, uh, it'll automatically handle all those animations for us. So this is a really nice win to create dynamic themes or be able to just create custom themes for your users. We've been going through the process of actually adding uh, view to our own CLI. Now we maintain our own CLI for certain features that we want to offer people like doing, being able to do cloud and remote builds. Now we added the type property to our CLI uh, and this allows us to switch different project types. So if you want to start a fresh Ionic view project, this would be your option to be able to do that and it would go through and install the dependencies for you give you a, a slightly opinionated way of how to build an app, uh, but still give you all the freedom that you would want to be able to make those decisions. And we think that gets us to a point where we can say, hey, well, if we can deploy to the web, deploy to native, uh, and also deploy to the desktop, we really just have a very thin kit over here that allows you to do that. It's the Ionic uh, UI, some native plugins, view as your application layer, and then wrap that all together, it's iOS, Android, progressive web app, uh, desktop through things like Electron, uh, and you can have a great experience. Uh, we've been prototyping that with this new tool called Capacitor, uh, which allows us to take some of the lessons learned through other projects and build out what we think is a, uh, a pretty, pretty good middle ground for uh, building apps. But there's, there's kind of one more thing that I want to talk about. And we're going to close that. I'm sorry, the tech guy, if I just ruined that. So let's just do this real quick. Here's the part where we, where we panic if nothing goes well. Oh, actually, that's, that's a lot better than I thought. Now I got that uh, view jingle stuck in my head. 
Thanks, Ben. Cool. So I just published Ionic View beta. Thank you for, uh, for doing that with me. I'm going to publish a lot of uh, more, more content for Vue and Ionic in next com coming weeks. First off with a blog post going over Ionic View. Uh, I really want to get you know, feedback from the community. I want to figure out, is this something you know, that you want to do? Uh, Charlie had a, uh, Charles had a really good point in, in his talk where if you have feedback and you want to get it, we as uh, open source maintainers really, really value that feedback and we want all of it, uh, good and bad. So I'm not going to take too much more time, but I do want to say that Ionic and Vue really make a great pair. Uh, Ionic provides a simple approach to building out your app and your UI, and Vue provides a great uh, patterns and structure for building out the app in a scalable way. Uh, if you want to give it a shot, please, please reach out to me. I, I love to see what you want to uh, build and what we can do to make this work. GitHub.com, Ionic team, Ionic master uh, view. Uh, if you want to check out some of the code and give us some feedback, uh, if nothing else, thank you.